Hey, what's up disc golf fam? Hey, today we're gonna go through and look at a couple of the different disc golf dying techniques that are used. Uh, I'm gonna try to break it down. There's a lot of videos out there that uh, say, hey, this is how you die a disc, but they don't go and run through the different methods that you can use because there's a bunch of different types. So this video is not gonna be a, like showing examples of each one. I'm just gonna run through some of the different things that you're gonna need for each technique and some of the different types of results you can get. I'll flip us around here and give you kind of a, a preview real quick. Okay guys, so here's some of the different types of stuff you may end up needing. There's just some of this collection uh, and I'll run through each one. I'll put uh, timestamps down so you guys can click through and, and see the different types. But here are some of the different discs and how they've come out. So we'll cover each one of these and uh, if you like these, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll put the timestamps down below. Uh, so we'll run through the intro and then we'll, we'll jump straight in. Okay guys, hey, before we go any further, I wanted to point out that uh, none of this is a, original content or original concepts. This is all stuff that I've gathered from looking around at different YouTube videos uh, and kind of, you know, learned along the way. So I'm just trying to condense everything down. I'm gonna try. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff to cover, but I'm gonna condense everything down so that you can watch this one video and get an idea of the different types of techniques that you can use. Uh, so we're gonna start off by some of the basic stuff that you're gonna need to you know, probably realistically, realistically for any of the different methods that you're going to be using. So you, these are your different frisbees. You can use a pie tray. You can use uh, uh, the disposable ones. You can use uh, a frisbee. The, I got these at the Dollar Tree, uh, so they were really cheap. Um, these are the Whammo discs uh, from Walmart. Those are like five or six bucks. Anything that you can get from a Dollar Tree or, or keep it cheap, uh, do that because a lot of this stuff can add up in price. Um, Going on, these are glass containers uh, because these are acetone based. If you're gonna be mixing some of your powdered dyes, you're gonna mix them with acetone or alcohol and those will eat through plastic. Uh, I don't have them anymore, but I used to have some containers that, that like it was eating through the plastic. If you store them in plastic, it, will, it can eat through them and leak all over your counter or whatever. So glass containers, uh, same thing goes for these mixing cups. I got these from Hobby Lobby uh, and the acetone doesn't eat through them. Um, if you're going to be dyeing discs with patterns uh, to like cut them out and to, like if you wanted to do a, a, like a Rick and Morty theme or whatever, you need some contact paper. Um, different things like skewers, uh, you're going to be using this to either pop bubbles or push things around or swirl. Uh, a, a toothpick works if that's what you happen to have at the house. I've got a straw, this is just from like McDonald's to be able to blow dye around. Um, this is one of the little syringes that you get in like kids medicine. Uh, these are good for measuring out different types of things, whether it be acetone or alcohol, or you can put lotion in these and squirt it out. Uh, same thing with the squirt bottles here. I got these from Hobby Lobby. Uh, they have dye in them right now, but uh, some type of squirt bottle that you can shake up and, you know, depending on, depending on what method you're going to be using. Uh, let's see, cotton balls, Q-tips, um, to be able to put to wipe off your stamps or to do some cleanup. Those are always good, have a bunch of those. Uh, paper towels, I don't have those out here, but you're gonna need those. Uh, these are glass tipped uh, squirters, eyedroppers. Um, if you vape, save your vape bottles, or if you have a friend that vapes, get, get those from them um, because those work great. Uh, you just clean them out first, but these are great. You can get the plastic ones, uh, but the, the plastic tends to die and it can uh, contaminate your different colors and they don't last very long. Uh, acetone and denatured alcohol, depending on what method you're gonna use, you might have to mix uh, some of your powdered dyes with these. Uh, so alcohol might not be as necessary, but acetone is. Uh, if you're gonna be wiping stamps off of discs or if you happen to spill some dye on whatever surface you're dying on, you can use acetone to get that off. Uh, I picked up a couple of different torches. I started with this one. Um, it's great for after you get done dying, uh, you can hit it with a torch and pop some of the bubbles. Um, this is like five bucks at Hobby Lot or uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. And then I just picked this one up uh, a couple of days ago, a little beefier setup. I think this was like 25, 26 bucks. Okay, so that's, that's the basics of what's going on. Now we'll jump into uh, our different dyes that we're gonna be using. 
All right, so here's some of the com the different dyes. I use three basic ones. Uh, there's there's one or two others, so I'll go through them. So RIT dye, you can buy this at Walmart. This is probably the easiest one for you to pick up. You can see the price right there, right around five bucks a bottle. It's already pre-mixed, it's a liquid, uh, and it's ready to dye. So you just shake it up and then you pour it onto whatever medium you're using and it dyes. Uh, it, it gives some pretty decent results, but uh, it only works in certain situations and, and I'll point that out. So if you're gonna get this stuff, make sure it's the synthetic. Um, there, there's a couple of other ones like all purpose, but you need the synthetic kind. Uh, next is Pro Chem. Uh, you can find this online. I haven't been able to find this in any stores locally, so I think you can only purchase it online, but this is great stuff. A lot of the, the pro uh, dyers use Pro Chem. Um, because it, it gives you really vibrant colors. So this is good. It's powdered and a little goes a long way. And then there's worm dip. Um, there's another type called spike it. Uh, these are actually made for dyeing uh, fishing lures. Um, but this gives, it's UV reactive so it looks super cool under a black light. It really brights, uh, lights up. Um, and the colors are really vibrant. So this stuff, I mean, I don't use, if you try to dye a disc only with uh, the worm dip or the spike it, it might not look too good. It might be too vibrant. So, uh, you know, I end up using this with uh, other dyes. And then I can show you right here. I've got, uh, this has Pro Chem, the powder mixed with lotion in it. And then this one is Pro Chem, uh, that it's mixed just straight with acetone. Uh, I have some other lotion bottles that have a uh, RIT dyed in with lotion and mixed in there. Um, but those are the big ones that I use. There's also another uh, type I'll put up a picture. I dye is the company um, and you want to get I dye poly. A lot of people use that. A lot of pros use it. They really like it. It's kind of comparable. It's a powder. It's comparable to the pro can. All right, so hey, we have our first method here. The, this is kind of what I would consider basic. Um, you're going to be using shaving cream. Uh, this is just shaving cream that I got at the dollar store, keeping it super cheap. You don't need the fancy stuff. It doesn't have to be Gillette or whatever. Just keep, buy whatever's cheap. So a couple things you can do with this is what you're like, you're going to pop it off and there's two basic methods that I've seen. One is you fill up the tray like fully and then you scrape it off so you have a flat surface on top. Then you can use whichever dye you want. If it's RIT or the I dye poly or worm dip or whatever, whatever you're going to use. You can drip that straight into the shaving cream and then you can use a some type of you know a skewer or something swirl it around and it's going to give you a, a space type of look it gives it kind of a cosmic space milky way type of look i'll put some pictures up there of, of what those look like uh, the other way that you can do it that i've seen with shaving cream is you actually spray it in and you create kind of a mountain with your shaving cream then you can take powdered dye so you can use Pro Chem, or I actually think that you can get the RIT in a uh, powder form, or you can use I Dye Poly, some type of powder, and then you're going to sprinkle it on top. You know, you do the, the different colors, uh, but yeah, you sprinkle just straight dye on there. Then you can spray it with some alcohol or water, uh, and then you can, if you wanted to, you could add some, some drops of color in there as well. And then, since it's this mountain form, whenever you push your disc down onto it, it displaces the the powder form and it creates kind of streaks in your disc uh, and it kind of looks cool i generally don't do much shaving cream dyes um, just because it's personal preference I, I like the other methods better but this is a great way to get started super cheap uh, i mean this this whole setup i mean you spend maybe 15 bucks and you're dying discs and you can get some really cool looking discs. There's several YouTube videos out there of guys that have made some pretty sweet looking discs just using shaving cream. Okay, now moving on to the glue method. Uh, this is one super popular. This is one of my favorite techniques. This is what I use to get the different types of swirls in a, a bunch of my discs. Um, whether I'm using a, a skewer to, to make the swirls or you can uh, blow around the dye in there and make some really cool effects as well. You can use clear glue. Uh, I think clear glue, it's a little more runny than the white glue. And so I think it gives you better looking swirls. Uh, it can give you longer swirls um, because the white glue, it works, um, but it, it 
since it's thicker, the, the dye doesn't move around as much, and so it's gonna give you much tighter swirls. It, it still looks cool, and you can get some good effects with it, um, but I, I generally stick to clear glue when I'm doing swirls. When it comes to dye when using glue, uh, if you're trying to get swirls, using the pre-made RIT dye doesn't really work. Um, as soon as you drop this into the glue, it's going to sink down into the glue, and that's bad. I mean, you could still swirl with it and get some effects, but uh, it's not going to look as good as some of the other methods. What I recommend is using uh, Spike It or the Worm Dip, or the what I use most often is using a powder dye. Uh, this is ProChem, and I, this is just mixed straight with acetone. So because of the different densities of the liquids you're using, the acetone-based dyes will actually, when you drop it onto the glue, it'll stay on top. It'll just kind of spread out on top like an oil slick. So when you do that, you can swirl it around and that's how you get some really cool swirls out of stuff. Um, something to keep in mind is that if you are using clear glue, uh, depending on what colors you're going to use, it's going to be really hard to see them in the, in the clear glue. Uh, if I drop a ProChem uh, yellow, for instance, or some of the other vibrant colors from Worm Dip, I drop it in there and like within a second I can't even tell. It just looks like clear glue. So you have to really kind of get down at an angle and see the different types of, you know, shines coming off the glue to make sure that you're, you're, you're swirling all of the different colors together. Uh, it comes up way better when you're using the school glue. You're going to be able to see all of your colors, but it's a, it gives you a different type of uh, effect when you're swirling it. So just keep that in mind. All right, and now we move on to lotion. Uh, I've got a, a, a couple of buddies who dye almost exclusively with lotion. Uh, it gives you really good, uh, really good results, um, and it's really cheap to get into. Uh, this is what Queen whatever Queen Helene or whatever this is like a little less than two bucks per bottle at Walmart uh, it's it's more watery um, so it's really easy to swirl and do some some get some really cool effects with it um, this one is what equate uh, cocoa butter <clears throat> um, this one's thicker so if I'm trying to get a, a thicker base or a thicker medium uh, sometimes I will mix these two together uh, and I'll show you one other thing that, that I'll, I end up actually using this to mix it and make it thicker. Um, but this one's easy. You, you pour it down in there, then you pour whatever kind of dye you're going to use. RIT dye works great for this. Uh, Pro Chem, Worm Dip, anything works great with this. Uh, you just mix it all together or do whatever kind of pattern you want and it comes out looking super cool. Um, the other cool thing about using cocoa butter is your disc will smell like cocoa butter for a long time. I've got some that I dyed about two years ago and they uh, when I like first started dipping my toes into it and they still smell like cocoa butter. Uh, so super cool. This is one of the methods I use a lot. All right y'all and the last method that I see being used more uh, in the community uh, is some type of method to try to get cells in your dyes. Um, so this disc right here where it has these kind of spots and bubbles in it, the different cells um, this was a, an attempt that I had of trying to make cells. So uh, you can use uh, a lot of, a really common method is using Floatrol in your different mixes. Um, this is actually a paint additive to where it gives you cleaner brush strokes and it mixes the paint better, it gives you a better consistency. And then you do some type of mixture with Floatrol and lotion or glue. Um, and I'll show you some pictures. The ones that uh, I've done where I used glue usually turn out pretty faded. Um, so they still kind of look cool, but it's, it's not like vibrant like this one. This one I used uh, Floatrol and Cocoa Butter, and I mixed them up together to get the right consistency that I wanted, and it gave me pretty decent results. Um, one thing to note is that the RIT dye uh, seems like it doesn't do well when you mix it for this method. Uh, you can kind of see on here the, the clear area right here, where it's kind of like white washed out. That was actually like a very vibrant blue when I mixed it in the dye bed. So it didn't come out. You can't really tell it's blue at all. So for these, I generally stick to uh, the ProChem mixes, so ProChem and acetone. Um, the same thing goes for the, the Quick Coat. If you mix this with lotion, sometimes it gives you good results, but it, the, the big uh, factor is when you mix it with the Floatrol, 
uh, or white glue, it tends to, to wash it out and mute your colors a lot. Um, I've done some mixes with just Floetrol and uh, different dyes, and you get a ton of cells, but it washes out your, uh, your final product and it, you don't have vibrant colors. Um, I'll post a, a link down below. Uh, Tiffany Shaw put out a video with the, the Difference is Doing It channel, the Team Diddy channel. And she has some really cool methods. Um, and one of the discs that I most recently dyed actually, oh, this guy was using her method. So I'll, I'll put the link down there and I'll do some, some follow-up videos where I'm doing examples of some of my favorite methods that I use. Um, but if you wanna get results like this, uh, I'll, I'll put the link down below. She has some really good techniques that she has. I think she's developed. She's kind of used them from other acrylic pouring uh, channels, but uh, some really cool results with those. Okay, fam. Hey, that's a wrap. Uh, I've got league to get to. It's a rainy day, so that's going to be an interesting round. Uh, but that's it. I hope this met the intent of being a decent primer for the people who are new to dyeing discs. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is not one method is better than another. They all produce some really cool effects. So whether you're using shaving cream, lotion, glue, it doesn't matter. You can get some really cool stuff and a lot of the pros that are out there actually you know, having a business and making money at this use any of these different techniques to, to get some really cool results. Uh, so I'll do some videos, like I said, of, of the different ways that I like dyeing discs. Um, those will be the next ones I put out. Um, and give, go more in depth uh, and give you kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial of how I do stuff. So until then, throw far, shoot low, and peace.